But I live a dream life in many ways because I let my dreams die. I had these dreams as a young man, and they were very useful for getting me out the front door. They were very useful for putting me on the, on the path. But if I had held to them too tightly, the, the path would have led to nowhere. And because by God's well, grace, a, I had that's the... A great ob that's a great observation, you know, because I counsel people to develop a vision for their life. Because hmm. if you don't have a vision for your life, you're going to be playing a role in someone else's vision. And it might not be yes. one you would award to yourself. But I also say... Don't assume that it's the precise, that the precise details of this vision are what's going to unfold. But actually what, what it is, it's a, it's a self-correcting system. Eh? As you aim up, but you don't really know what you're doing, and then you wander towards that up, and as you go, you collect more information, and that enables you to modify the vision. So I would say, maybe tell me what you think about this, that it wasn't so much that your dreams died, is that as you pursued them, they got sharper and clearer, and that meant you had to leave some of the excess detail behind. But you do, when you, when you, when you translate a vague notion, like I'd like to go to Hollywood and be successful, that's a pretty vague plan. When you transfer that into the real world, that should sharpen, right? You should find your specific destiny. And that's also, by the way, that's the bringing down to earth of the meta-narrative, right? I mean, the meta-narrative is young, man from small town goes to Hollywood and makes good, but there's not a lot of detail in that. And you flesh that out as you move forward and sharpen your vision. And, and so you found that you had specific talent more on the production end. So what did you discover about yourself that was relevant to the production side of things? And how did that tangle up with the, with the, um, with the instantiation of the Daily Wire and then its expansion into entertainment? Well, I would say when I was a child, I thought as a child, right? I had this dream, as you say, it had, it was, it was nothing if not ambiguous. It seemed, mm -hmm. it seemed clear to me because my exposure to the world had been so small. You know, go west, make good, as you say. That, that, that seems substantial. But of course, anyone who's lived any life as an adult at all knows that that's not substantial in any way. That has, there's nothing there you can hang your life on. So I came to Hollywood and I immediately began failing. In fact, one of the great criticisms that people make, if you even read comments about the <laughs> the kids announcement of the Snow White announcement this week, you'll read many people saying, Jeremy Boring is a failed film producer. He's at it again. Uh, failed screenwriter Ben Shapiro. And I always think that's a very funny criticism. I mean, after all, I, I don't say this with any sense of arrogance. I say it simply as a matter of fact. I'm quite successful. Uh, in any material sense, I, I am a quite successful person. Uh, that success is built atop all of the failures that my detractors online are trying to mock me for. What they, what they don't understand is how proud I am of those failures, how instrumental those failures were in helping me to come however far I've come, and it'll be future failures that take me wherever it is that I ultimately right. go. Well, you know, a, a failure... Failure is a very interesting way of thinking about something. It, it's a foolish way of thinking about something if you're committed to the end goal. I mean, what I've learned in my life right. is that I've never done anything that I actually did that wasn't a success. Now, I'd add a coded to that, which is that doesn't mean it, would, it succeeded the way I thought it would. Right. right. So, but, but if you put your heart into something and the original end that you had conceived of doesn't make itself manifest, that doesn't mean that you didn't learn 10,000 useful things that you're going to be able to apply to the next project. It also doesn't mean that I've often salvaged projects from years later when I think, oh, okay, well, that didn't work out there, but I've got all that sitting there that I've mastered. I can now apply it to this. And I, I truly don't believe that I've ever put my heart into anything in a committed way that hasn't really radically paid off, even though the time frame of that payoff was indeterminate and the, the, the potential initial goal might not have been realized. And then the other thing I would say about the critics who are criticizing your repeated failures is that they don't know anything about entrepreneurial activity. And I, I studied entrepreneurial activity technically for a very long time. And one of the things that you see with entrepreneurs is that, and you see this with venture capital investors, is that the ratio of failure to success is very high. And you have to do a lot of things before something goes viral and bears fruit. But that doesn't mean that all those other attempts that didn't 
magically catch fire were failures It just means that you have to you have to do a lot of things before any one thing really catches on and so if you think that you can be successful without failure you don't know anything about how to be successful so that's just a foolish criticism